Gospel? Speaking the gospel? The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. It will seem like all hell has broken loose, sun, moon, stars, earth, and sea, in an uproar and everyone all over the world in a panic, the wind knocked out of them by the threat of doom, the powers that be quaking. And then, then, they'll see the Son of Man welcomed in grand style, a glorious welcome. When all this starts to happen, up on your feet, stand tall with your heads high, help is on the way. He told them a story. Look at a fig tree, any tree for that matter. When the leaves begin to show, one, one look tells you that summer is right around the corner. The same here. When you see these things happen, you know God's kingdom is about here. Don't brush this off. I'm not just saying this for some future generation, but for this one too. These things will happen. Sky and earth will wear out. My words won't wear out. But be on your guard. Don't let the sharp edge of your expectation get dulled by parties and drinking and shopping. Shopping? <laughs> Otherwise, that day is going to take you by complete surprise. Spring on you suddenly like a trap, for it's going to come on everyone, everywhere at once. So whatever you do, don't go to sleep at the switch. Pray constantly, constantly that you will have strength and wits to make it through everything that's coming and end up on your feet before the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. There we go. Christian, oh, please be seated. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Christian warned us that the media shop was kind of going in and out. So he said, bring your prayer books. Like, oh, yes, the prayer book. Remember that? <laughs> okay, you guys, good morning. So who can tell me what day it is today? Sunday. Brilliant. Yes. <laughs> Elaborate more, like the, tell me more. What? Yes. First Sunday of Advent. Awesome. Nicely done. It's the first Sunday of Advent. What is that? Right? Like, what is Advent? Any quick summary of what we... Preparation for the birth of Christ. Awesome, right? So it's this like, four-week period when we prepare for the coming of the Lord. And the word Advent just comes from the Latin Adventus or Adventus, depending on your pronunciation, means coming or arrival. So this is a time when we're preparing. We're preparing for the coming of Christ. It's also, some people say, New Year's Day in the church. So in the church year, if you follow the church calendar, this is the first day of the new church year. So Happy New Year. That's something else bizarre that you can say to people and make them look at you like you're kind of crazy. But yes, New Year's Day in the church. So, okay, who can tell me how many days until Christmas? How many days? Yes. 23? 20, awesome. 23, 22, depending, like if you're counting Christmas Eve or Christmas Day, but yes, absolutely. And does anyone here feel like that is a long time to wait? <laughs> okay, some, yes, yes, some. I, the, the younger crowd generally feels like. And who here feels like actually it's going to be here <laughs> in the blink of an eye and you wish you had an extra week? Yes, okay, thank you. I'm, I'm with you on that one. Um, you know, the way that a lot of us expect experience Advent is <laughs> the time we're waiting for Christmas to get here, right? I mean, we're waiting, and we're waiting, and we're waiting. You know, we come here, we light a candle, anticipation grows every week, a new one, the beautiful prayers this morning, thank you so much. Um, but in our gospel lesson that we just heard, did anybody hear anything about the baby Jesus today? No, and Mary, Joseph, wise men, nothing, nothing, nothing like that. Instead, what we heard was a very adult Jesus warning us about what it's going to be like when he returns. 
So it's going to be, um, he tells us what to expect, what to watch for, um, what to look for so that we will know when he's coming again. And this is obviously important information, right? We need to know these things. It's important to know what's coming. But the question that I had is, why does the church ask us to think about Jesus' return, what we sometimes call the second coming of Jesus, in these weeks before Christmas? That's kind of not what everyone might expect. Here's the thing. Advent, this season of Advent, isn't just about preparation for Christmas. Advent is about learning to wait well. Who likes waiting? Raise your hand. <laughs> I, don't, I don't love it either, right? Nobody really loves waiting. But learning how to wait and wait in a way that's pleasing to God is a huge part of a joyful and a productive life. I mean, Scripture is full of waiting, of stories about God's people waiting over and over again, especially in the stories of the Old Testament. God would tell his people through a prophet that he was going to do something awesome. He was going to do something for them or something through them. And sometimes, like maybe going out into battle and defeating the bad guys who were harassing the people, sometimes that would happen right away. I love it when things happen right away, right? It's instant gratification. But other times, God would give different promises. He would give promises, for example, that a king would come. A king who would be a descendant of David, who would lead his people with love and power, and who would be fair and watch over Israel always. Now, the prophet Isaiah told about this king 700 years before Jesus was born. The prophet Jeremiah talked about this king 600 hundred years before Jesus was born, but Jesus was and is that king. But waiting? That can be difficult. Waiting 700 years is especially hard. I mean, you could start getting pretty discouraged at like year 350, right? Or like, I mean, come on. You might even start doubting that God is going to come through at all. But I'm here to remind you what you all already know, and that is this. God always keeps his promises in his time. In his time. And so we, the family of Christ, we learn how to wait God's way. Okay, where's my band? Band members, raise your hand. There we go. Okay, awesome. You didn't know that I'm going to ask you some questions now. So if, yeah, yeah, you ready? Yeah, ready. Okay. If you awesome band that we love so much got up here and each one of you just started playing your part whenever you felt ready, how would that work? regardless of the timing of the music or the timing of the other players, the soloists, just start singing, would that yield a, a good performance or good worship time? Yes? They have those. They're called open mic night. <laughs> <laughs> the professional has spoken. <laughs> yeah, right? Not, not the highest quality. Yeah, yeah. I get it. I mean, yes. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. It would not be, I'm answering for you, right? It would not be melodious. It would not be harmonious. It would not accomplish 
what you guys and gals have gathered here to do. You see, Advent teaches us that living God's way is a lot like playing in a band. All the members, watch them up there when they're up there, they all stay alert. They stay alert to the timing, the timing of the music, the key, the rhythm. They watch each other. And they pay attention to us, too. The amateurs out here trying to sing the songs when we don't really know all the words, right? They pay attention to us as well. They stay relaxed, but focused so they don't miss their cues. Because if they do, the music just kind of falls apart. They're having fun up there, right? You look like you're having fun. But they're paying attention. The band is doing exactly what Jesus is teaching us to do this Advent. This is how we practice waiting for Christmas and for Christ's return. Listen to what Jesus said. Be on your guard. This is the best line in the whole thing. Don't let the sharp edge of your expectation get dulled by parties and drinking and shopping. American Christmas culture, call your office, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm talking to myself. Don't let the hustle and bustle that's happening all around us distract you from Christ. Jesus says, otherwise, that day will take you by complete surprise. We don't have to be taken by surprise because he's telling us, pay attention, don't miss your cue. And he continues, Whatever you do, don't go to sleep at the switch. Pray constantly that you'll have the strength and wits to make it through everything that's coming and end up on your feet before the Son of Man. See, that's what Advent is all about, Charlie Brown. Learning to wait without becoming discouraged or dulled to what God is doing. Instead, we'll remain alert, hopeful, focused, confident that God always keeps his promises. I mean, practically speaking, with God's help, we can do this. We can do all our Christmas shopping and the decorating and the celebrating with friends and still keep the focus on the Lord Jesus at the center of our lives this Advent we can do this. This family does this together really well. By the power of the Holy Spirit, we can wait in joyful anticipation, knowing God is rarely early, but never late. Always on time. That's what makes a good Advent. Practice waiting God's way. That's what prepares us for the coming of Christmas, the coming of Jesus as a baby, and the return of Jesus, King of kings and Lord of all the earth. Amen. Please stand as we affirm our faith together with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one.